Tabernacle Christian Church. But well, we're going to love here. Uh, you're going to leave here and ain't nobody going to run you off. How everybody feel today? Just wave your hand if you're feeling good. Oh, that's a majority rule. Yes, yes. We're going to go ahead and get started on one. How many of y'all, when you woke up this morning, you didn't have any doubt? Oh, these are only three. Okay, anyway. So we're going to move on. This morning when I rose. This morning when I rose. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have no doubt. Hey, hey, hey. This morning when I rose. Yeah. Y'all better come on up. Y'all 
Y'all better come on up. We come to worship a true and living God. We're not here to prime y'all up, to pump y'all up. We are here to praise and worship God. So if you missed the bus, wait on the next one. Oh, come on and bless the Lord in this house. Oh, come on and bless the Lord in this house. 
I don't hear you get thanked. Come on and bless the Lord in this house. Aren't you glad to be here this morning? I said, are you glad to be here this morning? Are you glad that he woke you up with a finger of love? I need you to open up your mouth like God. Y'all sitting around like God ain't did nothing for you. If you owe God a praise, I need you to stand up on your feet. If you know that he's the one and true living God, I need you to stand up on your feet. Should have been dead. Could have been dead. How many know that the Lord is great? Oh, come on, Zion. How many know that the Lord is great? Y'all know the song.
they can lift me up. Do you want to be lifted up by the Lord today? Come on. Then you lift me up. In the fullness. In the power.
in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Welcome to Mount Zion where you will love here or what? And ain't nobody gonna run you off. Amen. Every first Sunday is our communion Sunday. Amen. And every second Sunday is our women's Sunday. Women, let me hear you make some noise this morning. study that starts at 7 p.m. Men, can you raise your hands today for me? All of these men that are raising their hands are on the line. These men, these great men, the men, the men. If you're not on the line, please see one of these men after service. Amen? They were on a powerful one last week. Amen? And every week, Go higher and higher and higher and higher because when you are in prayer, you're in tune. Amen. <laughs> we'll help somebody this morning. <laughs> Every Tuesday night is the praise team debriefing and Bible study. Amen. <laughs> and every Wednesday night is our youth Bible study. Amen. Let's give it up for our youth. It starts at 7 p.m. It is led by our very own Minister Mumford, our youth pastor, Pastor Alls, and our Lady Alls. Amen. If this summer is coming up and our kids are going to be open up, they're already open. So if you would like them to be a part of something great, and something great is coming down the line, which is our Vacation Bible School. Amen. It's coming. Please see one of these leaders, please, to get on the line. Amen. Also, we have a second service today, which we're going over to Malone Church off of Ivy Lane. We're going to bless their house today. Amen. So our church, the if you're riding the bus, the bus will be leaving at 3.30 sharp. If you're not here, meet us there. Let's go be a blessing to somebody else. Also, we have one more announcement for our senior Seniors Ministry, they have their um, May 22nd, 2023, 2023 Seniors Outreach Ministry field trip to Fort Christmas. Amen. The bus will be leaving at 10. Amen. I have all the information if you would like to know more about it. Amen. See me after service. If there's any visitors today, if so, please stand. Mount Zion wants to welcome you this morning to our worship. Oh, come on, Mount Zion. Oh, come on, Mount Zion. Y'all know what we do. Listen, listen. Especially when we walk my visitors here at Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. So we're going to sing for you this morning, okay? Why are you trying to dress like me this morning? Come on. The song says it's good to see you. He got the bow tie and all. Welcome to the service of the Lord. Welcome to Mount Zion. Come on, Zion, touch your neighbor. Say it's good to see you. Come on. Welcome to the service of the Lord. And welcome to Mount Zion. Come on, third time, Zion. Rock with it. Okay, Pastor, come on. Welcome to the service of the Lord. And welcome to Mount Zion. Come on, Zion, turn that thing around. And welcome to Mount Zion. Come on, welcome to the service of the Lord. What's going on, minister? Welcome to Mount Zion. Last time, Zion, come on, welcome. And welcome to Mount Zion. 
Listen, listen, on behalf of our overseer, Pastor Sally Murray, and our first lady, Lady Tamika Murray, we want to say welcome to Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church, where you'll love here. But ain't nobody gonna run you off. God bless you. Yourself this book. Yeah. That's good. We're gonna have our pastor come up to do this offering, you know, the way he do it. But I just want to encourage y'all that it's time to give, okay? Come on, put your hands together for the Lord today. Come on, somebody will be grateful for what he done for today. next month. If you don't have an envelope, raise your hand. A white one. If you're a member, you don't have your hand up. You're wrong. If you're a member, you don't have an envelope. Amen. For our guests today, we are preparing for our journey. God has blessed us with a new home. You like, as a matter of fact, if you leave out of this hallway, right on the wall is a big picture frame of our new building we're looking to move into in a few years. But we need your help. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes. Right. Amen. Free but the gospel. They come with a price. Yes. For those who can and will, first Sunday is Celebration Sunday. Amen? Yes. Amen. It gives you four weeks to come together with Lord, what God will give you outside of your tithe and your offering. How many know that tithe and offering is not about giving? What is it about? Value. value. Whatever you value in God, my brothers and sisters, is unlimited access to God. But you have to know God in order to know that. I'm not talking about church stuff. I'm talking about God stuff. So many times we get caught up in the church part of it, we forget the God part. For there is no church without God. Amen? Amen. Amen. For those who are visiting for the first time, if you'd like an envelope, if you'd like to pay your tithe or your offering towards it, if you haven't had a church home to endow your income to, raise your hand, we'll get you a gold envelope. Please put your name. But as you write it credibly, then we can see it. <laughs> and we will take notice of it. Amen. Amen? Amen. If you wish to give cash only, and not concerned about the envelope, then you don't have to take the envelope so we can pass it to someone else who can use it. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're proud to say that our church is in the community. Amen. Come on, put your hands up. Amen. I do not believe that we're just going to be here for Sunday morning. There's too many other days in the week. Amen? Amen. There's six other days that our blessings can be bestowed upon other people. And before I go any further, um, I want to say I see a couple of faces I just met yesterday. Thank you for seeing enough of God in us to be here today. Amen? Amen. God is doing a great thing, is he not? So, my Zion, are you with me? First of all, are you with God? So, are you with me? Because I'm with you. Amen? So, we ask those that can and will, if you will stand. We will start from our rear. If you have an electronic payment, you may step to the rear. Brother Christian, my brother in the back, he 
It will help you get to our finance area to help you with your financial transaction by debit or credit card. Or if you like, you can QR code as well, whatever you need. If you got bad eyes, like my sister here got. <laughs> you can step to the back and let God do what he does. Amen? Amen. So from my right, if you stand, come towards my left. Make no difference. Lady Tamika Murray. So the Zion Project, what we do is we go out into the community and help uh, the community understand the stigmas, fight the stigmas of mental health and other crises. We had our first summit uh, probably about a month or two ago. So on Saturday, we went out to Wood Hill Apartments and we had our resource bags that we gave out. So the Holy Spirit does this thing with our pastor that I'm appreciative of. And so we were gonna go door to door and that's a 400 building unit, right? 
and so it was about maybe 10 of us I want to thank and so the pastor said you know what let's just go to the entrance let's just go out to the front of the building and so we did and uh, you know the Bible says the Word of God says that I will make you fishermen of men yeah. and so that's what we were doing yesterday they, they didn't catch on but I'm gonna say this Okay, and it was Sister Jamie and myself. And we had the deacon come along and help him out a little bit later. But so Sister Jamie and I, we were doing really good with fishing, right? We had all these people that were coming out and they were excited. They were not rude. 90% of the people that came out did stop and didn't want to hear what we were talking about. And they did want prayer. They said, you know what? One gentleman said, you know, I really do need prayer. I need somewhere where I can be settled. I need a church home. I need somebody that can see about me. And so I said, you know what? Turn around. Go around this corner right here and see those two guys over there. And they're going to help you out. They're going to hook you up. And another lady I met, I'll keep it real brief. She said, um, well, who is the pastor? And I said, well, there he is over there. So she was very surprised to see that the pastor was out there. Yeah. Normally they'll send, you know, just maybe somebody, a representative, but I was proud to know that our pastors, both yeah. of our pastors were out there. Yeah. Um, it was a great turnout. Shout out to Sister Cassandra. Uh, we Somebody is out here that was out at Wood Hill and you came to stop by today, please just give a quick little wave and let us know. Amen. So that is a clear indication that our fruit and our labor was not in vain. And so we just thank you on behalf of our overseer, Stanley Murray and Tamika Murray, First Lady Tamika Murray, and the Zion Project. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord moved. We are a moving church. We're not an idle church. We're a moving church. That's why I say, if you think we're just doing it, see you next week. Amen? Amen. We're going to have Deacon Croker come and read our scripture. And then after that, we're going to have another song. Deacon, hold up a minute. They said they're going to sing a song first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I cleared away our pastor. So it won't look like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> the praise team is going to come and ruffle y'all feathers a little bit. All right? All right? All right. And then we're going to have the scripture by our own Deacon Crow.
scripture would be coming from second Ezekiel, second chapter, the eleventh verse. Reconcile unto Christ. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by him that at time ye <clears throat> were without Christ being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel a stranger from the covet of promise having no hope without God in the world but now in Christ Jesus Ye who sometime was for all or made near by the blood of Christ. Amen. I have read you from the 11th to the 13th verse. Amen. 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 Well, my brothers and sisters. All we have done this for Talk about it, sir. was to God. God really got something to say to us. So wherever your mind at, we ask that you pray right now that God will, 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 will release it so you can receive what the man of God is going to bring. Stretch your hands towards this pulpit and say, Pastor Murray, preach the word. Pastor Murray, Preach the word with a loud voice. Pastor Murray, preach the word. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. For he's worthy. Y'all don't want to have no church today. I keep telling folk, you better do what you can. We all on the clock, amen. Can we go back home for a minute? Glory, glory, hallelujah.
we trying to get to? They said, all, all. some, all. most, all. All. all, rise. 
So if I can stand up for a man, who's finna put me under? I can stand for a God that's gonna bring me in my place. Amen. Amen. The book of St. John, chapter 21, starting with the first verse. He says, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. They were together, Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, which means twin, and the Daniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto him, I go a fishing. And that's country for some of y'all. They say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answered him, said, no. Now he said unto them, cast the net on the left side, on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. You may be seen this. Give it honor to our God to his son that died on Calvary's cross, to our comforter yet still, the Holy Spirit. To our guests that are here today, we pray that thus far you have seen and experienced the power and the presence of the Lord. To the best church, my side of heaven. Well, we love him. But ain't nobody going to ring you off. You can come and do whatever you need. You just can't do what you want. <laughs> to the first mother of this house, the lady of distinction, quality and elegance, Put your hands together for another than First Lady to be converted. And all of her glory. I looked over this word earlier this week and God brought me to a understanding of how important it is to be confident in your Christianity. There are times that we build more of a relationship with church than with God. So not if, but when church lets you down, you stop going. But you have to ask yourself, if you are confident with God, how can church distract you? You go to a job and work with people you don't like. Well, You go to school and sit in class with folk you don't care for. You stand in line at Walmart in front of somebody who just hidden on your nerves. Yeah. <laughs> and yet you stay there to pay for the items you purchase. Yeah. So how is it when it comes to the house of God, the place of faith, right. we find ourselves veering left or right? Yeah. On, this particular text tells us how important it was to know your job, know your duty, and be diligent in it. So many times we have learned a few songs and several scriptures. Amen. And we believe that is good enough for us to manufacture a relationship with God. But I stop by to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, there is no relationship with God without fellowship with his people. Amen. You cannot sit on an island or in an isolated room by yourself and say that me and the Lord are on one accord and not be willing to assemble yourself on a place of worship. Amen. Now, 
I'm not saying you should just join up to anything that comes your way. I'm not saying you should just be a part of any household called faith. But I do say you should be seeking God's guidance just like you would for the man or the woman you wanted to marry. So ask yourself, if you struggle in your marriage regularly, did you and God talk? Did you struggle in your relationship on your job? Consistently, did you and God talk? You're having so many troubles in your college life and in your school life. Can't seem to get it together with your teachers and your principals and your deans. Ask yourself, did you have a conversation with God? John reminds us how much he loved Jesus. He was there at the cross where our Savior died. He was given the order by Jesus himself. Son, see your mother. And that relationship really was entailing because John had a commitment. Mm -hmm. Mary had a commitment. But it was only until God spoke to them both that they had a connection. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in our Christian walk, we're very good with comments and no commitment. Come on, Ray Ray. Some of us are good with comments that look like commitment but have no connection. Who is a mentor to you? Who can call you in the midnight hour and tell you you're wrong? Uh, who can let you know what thus saith the Lord and you understand it as truth? Where are your boundaries? How does your inner circle represent everything but you? How do you have friends who have not the values you have? Ah, this is going to be light, but it's going to be tight. How do you have family that you give all your attention to, knowing they only want to use you? I'm not saying you should not love your family. I'm not saying that at all. However, I am saying the Bible tells you to guard your heart. And that everybody's in a different place. And if they're not in the place that you're at, you got to have fences. So you can still be cordial and, 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 and have a love for them so you, can, so you don't find yourself not liking them. Yeah. So what would John bring to our knowledge today? Well, these men, these men, they were experienced fishermen. Okay. How could they go out to an area that they probably have been to before and not get any fish? The Bible says that they entered into a ship immediately, uh -huh. and that night they caught nothing. How could experienced folk who say they pray uh -huh. it up, get there all night praying well, all night. and nothing happens? Mm -hmm. How is it folk who praise God from an experience and an exposure level and nothing seems to manifest? Well, I'm glad you asked. He said, but when the morning comes, take this now, they entered into a ship immediately at that night. But when the morning come. Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew that it was Jesus. Did not know it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answered him, no. And our pilot text, we only have one verse, and I'm out your way. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. I had a way to encourage you today. Yes, sir. Look at your neighbor and say, Pastor's going to preach about when my good ain't good enough. When my good ain't good enough. We all have our levels of faith, our levels of trust. 
our levels of peace, our levels of long suffering. We all have our levels of what we believe God would ask us to be. And then sometimes we can be sidetracked or distracted because so much of the world is pulling at our very heartstrings. We're trying to be here for this person. We're trying to be here for that person. We're trying to be available for this situation. We're trying to make room for this incident. And before we know it, we get good at what we believe is good enough. Uh, we begin to deal in quality, uh, quantity over quality. Uh, we figure the more we do something, the greater it looks. But I stopped by to tell you, it's really the other way around. The greater you are in something, the more God gets the glory. Yes. Well, uh -huh. these fishermen, qualified, quantified yes, sir. to do the work, but were getting no results. Wow. Some of us are saying today, I, I, Pastor, I'm hearing you in another voice, but what you're telling me is, I'm, an, I'm, I'm inspiring to do all these things, but nothing is going to manifest for me. And what's the hidden factor? Well, first of all, I'm glad you asked. He said, when he said unto them, first of all, when my good ain't good enough, you got to understand you have to trust God. When what you say ain't good enough, you got to fix your speech. Well, oh my God. Sometimes we know all the right things to say, mm -hmm. but we don't believe what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got the t-shirt said I'm too blessed, to be wow. yeah. but my hot breath pressure is all over the place. <laughs> oh, me and the Lord, we on one accord, but I never felt more distant than I feel right now. Sometimes things happen in our lives and we say, God, why would you come into my household and tear it to a wreck? Wow. And the Lord would simply say, because it's my household. Well. You're only occupying the space that I allow you to breathe in. You're only occupying the space that I allow you to sit down and have dinner in. You are only the occupation, occupant of my thing. I am the landlord. I am the super. I am the one who runs this building called life in your life. And the sooner you give unto me, the sooner I can give back to you. Well, let's be real. Let's be, let's be real. We, we were talking in new members class this morning about three levels of how people operate. We have people who are unsure. They don't know left from right. It's just whatever seems right, they'll ride with it. If you Give them enough conversation, they'll jump on your boat. They, they, just, they just want to loan something moving, they want to be a part of it. And then you have those that are sure, but they're not confident. So depending on who comes to them on the day they come to them, with the situation that they come to them, they will put their situation over their salvation. And then you have what's called your seasoned folk. They've been around, they've seen it, they've done it. But the dilemma is they've been doing it so long they got no value in it. Wow. And so before they know it, they don't see the, the importance of being in a certain place at a certain time for a certain reason. But I come by to encourage you today, this is all to tell you how you feel better about yourself by feeling better in God. That you got to start looking at what you are in your life and saying, God, if I'm going through what I'm going through, I know there's going to be something you're going to use me greater to be a blessing to somebody else at another time. I don't know, I understand it right now, but all I know is I'm hurting and I am in pain, but I trust and believe in your heart that you said you will be me now until the end of the world. So whatever it is that I'm going through, I'm going to tackle it with you, not by myself, not with pills, not with a bottle, not with a smoke, not with a dress tail, not with a pair of pants. Am I by myself on this one? I'm going to go what you told me to do and look, seek your face so you can bring me to a place called peace. It's hard. It's hard trying to be the right person to the wrong folk all the time. It's hard to overwhelm yourself with the things of the world when you really just want to have your mind on Jesus. Yes. Come on up, brother. And people, places and things, they, 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 they are what they are and they do what they do. Don't, don't mean you better than them, it just means you're different. That's right. That's 
and it means you focus your focus somewhere else that they want you to put on that is it's just pulling away at your very heartstring is pulling away at your very spirit is diminishing who you are as a person is tearing you up who you are as a man or woman a boy or girl of God and before you know it they problems become your problems and now you ain't got time for your problems because you too busy handling their problems y'all not catching this but I stop out and tell you this morning tell them to cast their net unto the Lord that he can take care of all them So, when what you're saying ain't good enough, trust God. Then he says, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Now, it's funny how you want to believe that they had already done that. They're experienced fishermen. You, 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 you would like to believe, Rick, that they had already done this prior to Jesus showing up, right? Brother McCullough, you, you, you would think that they had put in their, their experienced people. They do things on a regular basis. You would think they had already done this. But what I'm trying to tell you is that when you do something for so long, you start creating shortcuts. That's right, that's right. Yes, you do. Talk back if you can. Yes, sir. When you when you learn things for so long of a period of time, you don't feel the need or the value to put your heart in it like you did when you first started. Y'all not kidding. When, 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 when you was when you was all up in her face. This, this is me and Sunday, right? When you was all up in her face, asking her what her sign was. You were sitting in the bartender across the room going, you better freak I'm by myself. Y'all have y'all been to the club? Y'all have never? Okay, for some of y'all who's in church all your life. Okay, let me try this. For all of y'all who waited in the parking lot where you could have left, but you was waiting on her to come out of church. <laughs> when you slip a note on her hand, somebody this from the Lord, but it was from you. Stuff you had done, you would think you had figured this out by now. The scripture saying, cast the net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. And basically what it's saying is you can do all the casting you want. You can put it anywhere you want to put it. But until I put my name on it, until I tell you it's real, until I tell you it's necessary, until I tell you it's needed, you're just wasting your time. I come by to encourage your brothers and sisters that you gotta look within your heart and say what you did and what you find may not be good enough. It is only until you give it unto God that it creates value. Why you say that, Dustin? In the ocean. There is an oyster. Who is at the bottom of the sea. In the position that it is, is in, it is worth nothing. Everything down there swims right by it. Nobody concentrates on it at all. But then... It is brought up out of that water to a new environment that when the oyster is open, inside of it, because of what it is intaked into its body, creates what's called a pearl. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, what was seen and valued as nothing. Because certain hands were put on it. And certain value was given to it. All of a sudden it's worth more than any of us can afford. What am I saying? That there's somebody in the room today that say, you know what, I feel like an oyster in the bottom of the ocean. 
folk is coming by, they ain't giving me no value. Folk is swimming through, they ain't appreciating me. Folk is stepping all over me and throwing me under the sand. But I saw Jesus put his hands on me. And when he brought me up out of what I was in and opened me up and showed me to the world, and they begin to see how valuable I really was. They begin to see they can't pay me for what I'm worth. They begin to see that I got more than they think I am. I want to encourage a blood wash believer today that maybe you feel like you got no worth. And maybe you feel like you got no value. I come by to tell you by the indoctrination of the Lord Jesus Christ that if you trust in the Lord, believe in what you say, and believe in what you do, Thus saith the Lord, he will take care of you. So I got one question today for you. Don't you want... You got to want greater. You got to want greater. You got to want greater. Why would God wake me up in the morning and not use me for somebody? Why would God allow me to go along all day long and all the foolishness and the crazy things I've done and not still hold me to my word? How much more do I have to endure to miss his love? How many more folk I got to mistreat? Because I don't know what love is. And I'm scared of it. I don't trust nobody. Not even myself. I'm all sick, I gotta be. And they can't find out what's wrong with me. Jesus. How much I gotta keep pulling on my heart? Why am I not available for somebody who's in need? Every morning I wake up, I have the same prayer. Lord, who would you have me to honor? Yes. Because somebody in the world needs somebody in the world. Yes. 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 Don't get caught up in so much of yourself that you miss the word of God. Feel compelled to be a household item in your household. Don't just live there, dwell there. Don't be a part of something, be in part with something. And so, we got here to the end. He said, well, my God, my good ain't good enough. He said unto them, when you, what you say ain't good enough. Uh -huh. He says, when you, when what you did and found ain't good enough. Mm -hmm. Then he comes into the last part of the scripture. He says, they cast therefore. Now, now, the Lord told them to cast. Uh -huh. And the Bible says, and they cast therefore. Uh -huh. Come. There's a pause for a reason. Many times God tells us to do something. And we drag our feet. Many times God tells us to handle something. And we don't want to deal with it. Many times God has put us in place to be a vessel before others. And we don't want to be used. And so if I leave you with this today, uh -huh. he says, they cast therefore come. And now that they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. What am I saying today? When what you say ain't good enough. And what you did and found ain't good enough. Now he's talking about when what you believe ain't good enough. Brothers and sisters, you talk to the average Christian today. And they'll ask you, who is Jesus? And all they'll tell you is what he did. Heal the sick, raised the dead, made the blind see, etc., etc., etc. That's not who he was. That's just what he did. Hence the problem. Most of us, Christianity is not based on what you say. It is not based on what you do. It is based on who you are. Because who you are dictates what you say and what you do. And when you don't say the right thing, 
And when you don't do the right thing, because of who you are, you're willing to go to the Lord in repentance. Am I talking about myself today? And say, God, I'm sorry for some things I may have said. And I'm sorry for some things I might have done. But at the end of the day, God, I want to be your vessel. I want to be used by you. I want to be set up by you. And sometimes in our lives, we find ourselves so caught up in the things we've said in our past, we can't do nothing in the present and deny in our future. I want to encourage you today, my brothers and sisters, that if you just got a firm belief that even though I made a mess, I still got a message and I can still be a messenger. Do I got any message? Messages this morning and say he trusted me when I didn't feel trusted. He blessed me when I didn't feel blessed. Uh, he took care of me when I thought I was on my own. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for me, my soul said that. So, I want to take this opportunity. Can't nobody beat you up worse than you. Can't nobody make you feel bad worse than you. And sometimes you may feel like I'm not worthy of God's love. I got too much I've said and done in my life. He don't, he don't want to deal with me. But I come to tell you that's a lie. Then if you woke up this morning, he still needs you. And there's still people he wants you to touch. Yes. There's still places he wants you to go. Yes. And there's still things he wants you to do. Yes. But you can't keep living in yesterday. Yes. And you can't get too far ahead with tomorrow. You got to live today like it's today. Yes. And so I want to offer you this morning that if you've not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, won't you come? Give your life unto him that he might bless you to another world of thinking. I ain't to my church thinking. I'm to my thinking of the gospel yes. and how he's going to use you in places you never thought you were qualified to walk in. Yes. He's going to put you in environments that you don't fit on paper. Yes. But you in the room. Yes. Maybe say, you know what, I know the Lord for myself. Come on, but I don't have a place to call my uncle. I don't have a place of accountability. I don't have a church. Amen. You know, it's lonely out there. As the uh, movie says, it's cold out there, Ray. That means the world will, will chew you up and spit you out. Yes. If you have been coming, keep coming to God guide you. But I come to tell you, if you come here, you're coming to work for God, not me. Because you have value, you're necessary, and you need. There's someone out here that will start getting their life together because of you. We said we walk by faith, not by sight. But let's be real, people follow people. They always have, and they always will. Just make sure it's the God of you that they follow. Maybe you say, you know what, today my heart is heavy. I just want prayer. I just want God to work on me about some things in my life. Maybe I'm in grief. Maybe I'm in mourning. Maybe I'm upset. Maybe I'm angry. Whatever God can do for me, I want, I want him to pray over my heart, my mind, my spirit. Nephew. Nephew. Jesus, Jesus Christ, you be dying for your sins, you be coming back just for you. Are you satisfied with the baptism you received in the past? All right. Are you willing to submit your gifts and talents with this house of God? Are you willing to submit to the authority we placed over you? Let's first lay down. Well, we want to receive you today in your own Christian faith. As a man of Abraham, welcome, welcome, welcome to my family.
There was a time when we made room for this in church. Because just because you're not going through today, you're meaning nobody else ain't going through. But we got cynical. We got bougie. We start judging. But we grew up on this. Those of us who are over 40, this is what mom and grandma and them did. So they could get back to Monday morning. But we got so caught up in you a millionaire, you a millionaire, you a millionaire, you a millionaire. We marketed Jesus so much we forgot the mission. And the mission was to break strongholds. Help people in their struggles. And guide them through their situations. And if we ain't got time for that, where are they supposed to go? for you and your family. Y'all come on. Listen, listen, I want you to hear this. Come, come, come down. Come down. This great family uh, is dealing with a tragedy right now. Come on around, brother. Come on. Come on around. That I wouldn't even know what to, where to start. I, I wouldn't know what to do. Beautiful wife, his daughter, his family here, his grandma. Oh, yeah. This week we're going to have to bury their son. 21 years old. No, he wasn't gang banging. No, he wasn't out in the streets. He was simply having fun at a spring in the water. Why am I telling you this? We got to quit playing with God. Amen. If he'll take the innocent. Hmm? Those of us who are doing what we want to do. Line yourself up with the word. Get into a church home. God is not mocked. But I still truly believe, my brother, whatever he has done. This morning as I was driving, I didn't even know if you guys were coming. God placed you in my heart. There's a foundation we need to start in his name. I'm not sure where it's going to go and what it's about, but God says his name needs to continue on. Yes, yes. And we need to find something that we can put that it caters to young people and young adults. Whether it be a scholarship, whether it be something to remind us that he meant well in his life.
us or not. I cannot say enough. Put your pride down. I went and visited a young man in the hospital yesterday. He's about as physically fit as you can get. Had a heart attack. But for the last two weeks, he's been battling on his job. And the stress was so much and it moved from his spirit to his body. Barely a good 40 years old with a heart attack. And this is what I'm saying, guys. Now you can keep doing your own thing and saying, Pastor, you're wasting my time. I could have been home by now. That's fine. But it's not a matter of if, it's when, guys. When you're going to say, not good ain't good enough. God needs me, and I need to be in place. But if you enjoyed yourself today, put your hands together for the Lord. Before we depart, um, we have some guests. Anybody would like to? I see we have Sister Vanessa's sister here visiting. Amen. You enjoy yourself? Yes, I did. Amen. 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 Polly! <laughs> now this couple, stand up, I gotta talk about it. I met when did I marry y'all? When did I marry y'all? Ten years ago. Now I have never been to a hee haw junction <laughs> when <laughs> now uh, I, I call uh, Brother Christian in the back. He's Jacksonville basketball player. I, I call him White Chocolate. We, did, we talk about that. But this White Chocolate 2.0, just so you know. This brother right here, he know more about black culture. <laughs> but we just have a love and friendship, and we just... He, he worked for a tire company, and I would always bring my cars there. We just built this love and relationship. And he came to me and said, hey man, listen, I want you to meet my girlfriend, and I met her, and we all fell in love, and they said, would you marry us? Wow. They could have went to a whole lot of places, right? They tried to rain them out, but God wouldn't let that happen. So y'all got anything I want to hear? Because my brother told me, I'm coming, I'm coming to see you. Come on. Oh, yeah, what a blessing. Uh, thank you. Uh, I've been getting to know you for uh, 25 years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, neither did I. <laughs> Amen. Hey, beautiful. You got anything? <laughs> Amen. The babies are how old now? About to be empty nesters. Graduation, amen. All right. Well, I got two more seats that y'all just sat in. Y'all keep coming back. Amen. Hey, the Lord, all right. Amen. Amen. Um, who else is visiting today? Who's, who's guest today? Amen. Your, your grandmother, she left? Okay. Would you like to speak on her behalf? Did she come? Come down, guys. Come down. Our church, what can we bring to our church, or rather, what can we extend out from our 
opportunity to go to a uh, Orlando Predator football game this Saturday night. If you do plan to go, please see Pastor Paul, raise your hand as soon as possible so we can get our numbers. Uh, we'll probably be leaving by bus um, uh, as well. And that'll be Saturday at 6.30. Believe, oh, wait a minute. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Because I think they want me to do the prayer with the team. Six o'clock. Amen. I was prepared for that. So I need y'all here at six. If you can't hear at six, then you have to try to meet me there. Because uh, I don't want the, uh, the delay what they have to do with me inside the stadium. Amen. Um, anyone else before we get to our... I want to thank Sister Sandra for letting us use her for her property area. <laughs> so y'all know we're about blessing people, right? Okay. Yeah. Grab me best. So we have a young, today is Men's Sunday, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we have a young man that has come from nothing to something All right. who just moved into his apartment. Woo -woo. Yeah. For you, there, but you know I'm old. <laughs> Brother Christian, uh -huh. has, can I tell it? Tell it All right. He was at the Salvation Army for a while. All right. And I visited, I've been volunteering there over 25 years. And I came and I spoke one night. He was touched. He started reaching out, started calling. He came in and started doing work for free and things like that. And every time he said, Pastor, what can I do? What can I do? Which some of y'all should catch on. But that's not the point. Um, <laughs> but he needed a place to call his own. And he had, he had an opportunity to go stay in a group facility, outside of the group facility. And I said, you sure God told you that? And so he prayed, and God gave him an avenue. And he's got his one-bedroom apartment. That's the new bachelor pad for all of us to go hang out. Because he ain't got no woman yet. We got at least block to Super Bowl, right? No women to Super Bowl. So he's going to be where we're going to go every Sunday evening to watch football with wings. And you know how we do jobs. You know? But I want to bless him. He, 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 he didn't expect this. He, I've been waiting on him because for three weeks he's been back and forth. His father just recently passed and he's been going to see his mama every weekend wow. um, to try to be a confident to her. Uh, but I want to bless him. So I want to ask that those that can and will will come and bring what you can to help him towards. He, he's got a job, but he rides a bike to work every morning. And my goal is we're going to help him with some things he needs in his household. A little toilet paper, a little soap. Because I'm sure he smells different when he gets home than when he started. Riding that bicycle for miles. So come on. That's what we do at the Mount, right? We bless others so that we can stay blessed. to the back and we'll take that and we'll, we'll find a way to transfer to his uh, cash out. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Oh, yes, ma'am, we got you. Yeah, you better play it, buddy. Go on, buddy. Amen. Let's pray. I'm going to ask Brother Milton. He knows what it's like to Amen. sometimes have that where it looks like nothing's working your way. I said he will pray over this offering today. Come on, D. Thank you for She appreciates you. Come on. Amen. Well, Mommy, you know I love you. Well, we all do. And um, I didn't expect you to spend your birthday with us at a time like this, but I appreciate you. Um, the minute we called her and told her what happened, she was on a flight the next day to be here with us. Um, it's probably not the best birthday, but we love you. And thank you. Just want to say happy birthday and I love you. service 4 o'clock. We'll be leaving from here at 3.30. If you're going to drive, please reach out on group me and tell you the directions for the second service. Amen. I need all hands on deck. Amen. Come with your shopping shoes on. Uh, oh yes, all of our seniors. If you're graduating, even coming from 5th grade to 6th grade, we want to know. Come next week. If you're graduating from 8th grade to high school, we want to know. And if you graduated from 12th grade high school, come on in. We want to know if you graduated from college. Come on in next Sunday. We're celebrating all of our graduates. Amen. Cap and gown. Bring your, at least bring your cap. And their names. And see, Sister uh, uh, Lady Veronica, for your names, let us know. 
Can we get you written up? Uh, we want to celebrate you next Sunday. Amen? Amen. Amen. Once again, if you're going on the senior trip tomorrow, tomorrow we'll leave from here at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Please be here. Be prepared to go. Amen. If you're struggling with the $5, come on. We'll figure it out. We're, we're with you. Uh, that's for our senior trip. If you're 50 and above, don't mean you're old. Just mean you're useful. Come on in. We want to use you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Two more announcements, Reverend. Sorry. Um, Pastor Avery needs to see all security okay. at the church. Also, First Family Appreciation, Regina needs to see. Please stop by and see her. Amen. 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 Shall we stand? Let the church see. Amen. God is spoken, let the church sing. safely. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Love somebody before you leave today.